Yo, what's good? I'm Noble, this is Headmaker Week, and I'm here with Sony and Beastars. I'm from Boston, and I got into producing actually because my grandmother is a professional pianist, so I started taking piano lessons from her when I was seven, and then I actually watched a video of uh, J. Cole making a beat on a tour bus, and it really inspired me to make beats because I saw that, you know, he was a musician who could go completely from scratch, and I wanted to see if I could do that one day. So I started playing piano in my samples um, because I wanted to start as a sample maker because as Juco was talking about, it's easier to go that route because you can appeal to the uh, producers who need samples for their beats. So I played live piano in my samples um, and I would actually take lessons from my grandma um, out in her house in Connecticut. And I started making samples there too by using the voice memos on my iPhone. And I would just record directly into there and then incorporate those into my samples. I mean, Beastars has really been like influential for me. Like it's been pretty much the main reason that I've been able to do everything that I did because I started posting on Beastars with nothing at first. I had no Instagram, I had no social media at all, but I wanted to get my beats out there in some way. So I would actually just copy the Beastars link and just send it to any local artists I knew, any friends I knew. And that's how I built the following on there. But after that, I kind of took my own route and just it kind of found my found its way back to me later down the road. And that's when everything really kind of took off for me. And I was able to incorporate it into all the stuff that I was doing with my sample making already and the connects I had there. I think one of the best moments that I kind of had in my career was when I was on the I was on the way to an event. I was 14 years old and I got a notification on my phone that I had a beat sale for $500. And this is the first time that I'd ever had like a sale this big, you know, cause exclusives are kind of a whole different lane than, than leases. And you can make a really good income off leases um, if that's what you're doing for monthly income. But leveraging the exclusive route and keeping the beats and keeping the ownership and waiting to get those big 10K and 20K advances can also help too. So when I had that moment, you know, just seeing that that income could be, you know, substantial at the age was crazy. If you're using Beastars Incorporated with YouTube, then it's gonna be better to find your kind of niche. So if you're doing tight beats, your channels are gonna do best if you find a niche. So for example, I have uh, my friend Reggie actually, who's out here in Miami. He built his channel on the kind of R&B beats. And we have one that actually went up a lot on Beastars that had like 400,000 views on YouTube. Um, and it was a sample that I did with my boy Rivers. So that was huge to see because Sending as many samples as you can to other Beastars producers is gonna help you in the long run because more producers using your samples, um, you'll be able to get those kind of views. So I had 400K on that one. That was like consistent income for me as well. So for example, I'd be in class and just getting like $20 sales every day consistently off that one video. And yeah. I think time management is huge. It's definitely been a little bit difficult for me, but pretty much what I try to do is just divide my priorities. So, I mean, school has been a high priority for me. I try and maintain, you know, A pluses and, you know, I have like a 4.3, but I got to the point where in my senior year, I was like, all right, now I'm, you know, I'm in the studio with like Trippy Red and I have all these other things that I'm managing. And it's like, I kind of fell off with school a little bit. Attendance got hard for me, but, at this point, I'm just like, let me graduate. And then I just want to take things my own route. I don't think college is going to be the, the move for me. I just want to kind of do the entrepreneur way. I think my first placement was actually a Soldier Boy song with, uh, with my boy Mac. Um, and when I got that song, it was amazing. My mom ran downstairs. She was like, this is your beat? Um, because she doesn't really know like a lot of the artists that I work with who are in the hip hop scene, but you know, she knows Soldier Boy. And, you know, that was just a crazy moment. That was at, I think I was like 14 when that happened. Um, so yeah, that song was cool. And then I think my favorite play, one of my favorite places right now is Not No More by Fresco Trey. Um, and I'm about to be working with him uh, tomorrow, I think, which is cool. And that came about with my boy, Simon Servita and TB, just sent it out to him. Yeah, I really love that record. And then um, She Knows by Rocco is a great song. Philly artist, uh, shout out to Luke. And then, uh, Sneaky, Sneaky Link Anthem by the Baby. Obviously my boy Alec and uh, DJ Kid, Flex. I think those are probably my favorites. Oh yeah, and uh, Jay the Prince of New York, Tulum too. Honestly, I think 
I find motivation every day in just the fact that I built a community and the fact that I have people messaging me constantly and reminding me like, you know, maybe your videos help me or maybe something that you've said, because I also do a lot of, uh, you know, content around men mental health and men's mental health, um, which I've had a lot of in my family. I've just tried to appeal to producers on a more personal level. So I've kind of had more genuine connections through, through that. And uh, my YouTube as well had a lot of impact on, on people messaging me and just, you know, keeping me motivated to, I don't know, it's like motivation is kind of like a two way thing. You know, when, when somebody sees that you're doing well, you know, they, they're going to do well because of that. And it's just, a, a, you know, both, both of you benefit each other. Um, so yeah, that's been amazing to see through growth and that just getting more people just, you know, associated with me and just knowing each other on a more genuine level. So being able to do things like this and being in LA and just really making the genuine connections has been huge for me, for sure. Honestly, the thing, the tough thing is I kind of do see the perspective. I, I do get it because at the end of the day, it's like being an inter internet producer nowadays is, is kind of difficult because there's a lot of, of saturation. There's a lot of people who want to do the same thing. And I think that if that's not for you and you do want to do the route of, of developing an artist, I think that's cool too. But people miss out on the fact that you can do that and also sustain a, a Beastars channel and a YouTube type beat. It's, it's not, it's really not that hard. And you can also create a community through that too and that will benefit your placement. So it's kind of like people don't understand that having both is, is not that difficult. It's beneficial because they both bounce off of each other. For type beats, for example, if you upload one type beat a day realistically that's probably about like an hour a day and a lot of producers have that hour even if they're doing you know developing an artist on the side and maybe it's beats that the artist that you're working with wouldn't usually do and it's good to to do other beats in, in lanes that you might not be associated with because you learn from that and then you also make other connections for example i started making more reggaeton beats because of uh my puerto rican friends and through that i was able to get more songs in spanish and you know learning a language and things like that so i don't know i think both is beneficial honestly my story with publishing is kind of unfortunate i haven't got a cent of publishing ever in my entire career um my manager did handle that but um my manager currently he passed away a year ago he had a heart attack so that was definitely difficult he kind of like helped me through everything at the beginning so that was definitely difficult but he would send out my samples and i was actually in my sophomore year history class and I think he was on a live stream and I went in it and I put it up to my ear and I was like, yeah, this is my sample. So that was, that was crazy for me. And, and he really, he was there, there for everything. He was always hitting me at 3 a.m. You know, he always needed samples. He was working, he was in LA, Miami, wherever, but he was born in Mass and he really respected the Massachusetts producer scene, which not a lot of people do. And he developed, you know, Tash, Tash and Hayes and, you know, just seeing all that circle of producers and everyone from Mass coming together was amazing. So yeah, definitely was tough to lose Kern, but through through that, I realized that, you know, I needed to get my pub because I hadn't touched a cent of it. And I downloaded this Bands app and uh, I, I looked at my value in the catalog, it was like um, 1600 and I was like, dang, I haven't touched a cent of my pub and I need to figure this out. So I actually had DM Mike and I was like, yo, we need to, we need to figure this out. And um, I sent him a, a screenshot of my, my B stars. And within like a day, he sent me three voice messages, explained the whole thing. He was just there, like every question I had, it didn't matter. And I DM'd him multiple other times after that. And every time he just helped me out, no worries. So huge shout out to him. And um, yeah, him and Half are just like amazing, amazing examples of, of how people can be like so selfless and just like accommodates the whole community. And I just love that that can be a positive side of the community because we have so much negativity and tox toxicity nowadays, you know, so much hate nowadays on social media. So it's amazing to see people like him and half and just everyone here, just a lot of positive, positive people. I'm Noble, shout out to B-Stars, shout out to B-Stars Publishing.